Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone. Welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, and today we are bringing you a special edition episode of the show dealing with our crisis at the Muscogee Creek Nation in the Department of Health. Specifically, our latest uh, development in this crisis was on September 30th, the laying off of a reported over 100 now employees from the Muscogee Creek Nation Department of Health. Um, and so as soon as we learned of the layoffs, as soon as we learned of uh, things going on, uh, we knew we had to do our jobs as Muscogee Media and ask the questions, the right questions to the right people. So we requested an interview with the office of the principal chief, James Floyd, uh, and his office granted that interview. We were able to sit down with principal chief James Floyd the day of. So this was that Friday, September 30th. And here's that interview exclusively for you now. Chief Floyd, can you explain a little bit of what is going on today? Sure, I'd be glad to explain what's going on today. And I want to thank you for allowing me the time to speak with the media so that I can inform our people um, the situation in health and the actions being taken today. Um, this is Friday, the last day of the fiscal year. Um, as you might recall, last week the council approved the authority and um, the agreements for the operations of the healthcare system for 2017. Um, the restructuring part of that is uh, the last steps of the restructuring is what is occurring today. And um, there will be people that um, some will be transferred to other positions and unfortunately some will have to be let go. So I thought as principal chief they need, you know, all our people need to hear from me about the background of that and so uh, welcome this opportunity. Can you tell us who is going to be affected and about how many people are going to be affected by this? Um, I, because of the personnel actions that are taking place, I can't by name say, um, and to be perfectly honest, I don't know all the names. Um, for about six to seven months now, the health department has been going through many options regarding our path forward. And the expense that we have, particularly with the expense of personnel, um, can't be sustained with the money that we have, both with the collections that we have coming in and all sorts of revenue, um, and also the appropriated money from the National Council and from the Indian Health Service. It's just the fact that we had too many costs. And it's very unfortunate. And as so today, we have the health department staff meeting with um, our staff throughout the nation and the hospitals and clinics explaining to them uh, the decisions that have been arrived at and the actions that must be taken. It's unfortunate you know, we have some very good people working for us and I think they're doing great things in, in providing care and support to patient care throughout the nation. But for our system to survive we have to make sure that we reorganize in a manner that we can be stronger in the future and this is one of the probably the hardest steps to take today and so you know it wears on me I think as much as anybody else uh, they you know all the staff have been on my mind uh, we, we try to do the best we can every day and um, I think being responsible at this point um, it, as the thing that we have to do and uh, it's just unfortunate that it involves people I know it will be disrupting you know, jobs and families, but we can still ensure that uh, come Monday morning, we have providers in place, um, we're providing quality care, we have the access for our patients, and the system will be established in a way that responds to their needs. We do have some positive things going on with the construction of the hospital and the clinic in Okima. We'll be starting the construction at Ufala soon. So, 
you know, this moment when things are very tight will pass as we begin to get reestablished with more resources to take care of more people. And that's what I think is kind of the most telling and important thing about this is that, you know, in 12 to 18 months, we will have the opportunity to bring people back. But at this point, we just don't have the, the means to keep everyone in place. And I, I know you can't list names, but is, is this over a variety, these individuals over a variety of facilities? Is, is it secluded to just a couple of programs or services? Can you elaborate on that? Well, I know one of the top priorities was to reduce our overhead. And so administrative positions and administrative support positions um, all along the positions that we knew that we needed to eliminate to guarantee that we had providers and, and clinical staff in place to take care of patients. And so <clears throat> this is all levels of the organization and um, in throughout the system. And so we, I think we had to be equal and have some equity in the decision making so that, you know, one part of our system didn't take the blunt um, kind of the, the uh, decisions of reduction that others may have. So again, to ensure that Monday morning patients can go in and um, see us providing care, I think is, you know, how we can reassure our people that the decisions that have been arrived at have not just been uh, very sudden decisions, but much thinking, much projections, uh, looking at a lot of data, talking to people to arrive at where we are today. What What is being done for, for these individuals that you're having to let go? Is is there a severance package um, and, and kind of how is the situation being handled? Um, <clears throat> I personally signed all the letters that um, they will be giving to staff, whether they're transfers or whether we have to, you know, um, dismiss them from work. And um, they do have, um, the tribe will make sure that they're compensated for any unused leave that they have and their savings that they may have in, in their 401k that the tribe has. So those things will be available to them. Uh, HR will be processing those in the next few days and so you know that's significant in some cases and um, so you know they will receive that uh, I'm not sure about unemployment since we don't really control that that's um, interaction with a contractor in the state so we'll see where that um, goes but they can certainly apply for that and uh, we'll do everything we possibly can to support them in that manner is are these layoffs in addition to um, the transition that's currently going on in the Department of Health with uh, merging the human resource and IT and finance functions, or is it kind of, um, is, I guess my question is, is it additional or is it the same individuals that are going to be affected? Well, the realignment is coordinated across the nation. Um, we can find um, economies of savings um, with the, you know, the, the, I can't recall just exact wording, but as we restructure and merge some of the programs, um, that's allowing us to keep some staff on that would have been laid off. So the, these are all coordinated. We had um, some inpatient services that were way underutilized that uh, we'll be merging into, in some cases, the facility here in Oak Mulgee and um, from the, the rehab center. So they'll be still available to people, but um, when you have the cost of the overhead of you know, five inpatient units that we had, when we really should only have two to three, um, we see savings. But unfortunately, you know, we don't need all the staff that we had to, to fulfill the, the needs of our patients. As, as far as the citizens in the community are concerned, uh, what services will be affected and will we see any closing of facilities? Well, the only um, things that the patients should notice is that we're continuing the same level of care. Uh, same quality of care will be provided as well. And hopefully many of the same people that they saw 
today, they'll be seen on Monday. Now, with the merging of inpatient units, um, because we're licensed by the state, we have to submit uh, and get approval, which we have obtained from the state, uh, of closure of units. But it doesn't mean that entire buildings are closing, just the units. But those units, those services that are being provided in remote locations will be provided here in Okmulgee at the Memorial Hospital. So it, it, am I right in saying that the inpatient facility at um, the rehabilitation center is, is going to be closed and those services will be moved to um, the medical center here in Okmulgee? The rehab center will remain open, but will be strictly outpatient. And the bulk of our work there is outpatient. So I think the average citizen walking in will notice no difference there because the overwhelming majority of our work is done during business hours. Very few patients occupied any inpatient bed. And that's one of the problems that we had was the very low occupancy rate. Zero, one, or two patients. And when you have a full complement of staff and we have no patients, uh, we've tried that system now for six months and um, not seen an increase. We just can't sustain that. And so, you know, I think that the National Council has been very patient with us as we proceeded. They've been very supportive as we, as we have proceeded uh, because we have been very detail-oriented and been open about this process with them all along. So um, the doors are not going to be padlocked or anything like that in any of our buildings. How, how will um, our health department programs and citizens benefit from this change and do you have an estimate of, of how much money the tribe will save by these changes? Well the savings um, overall will be um, really reapplied so it's not that we're going to bank money and put it in an account. I wish you know we had the luxury of having money in an account. Um, the, recent action by the National Council to allow us to enter into the letter of credit agreement um, is merely to catch us up on paying bills that some of which exceed two years. So when we have debts that have been going on for more than 24 months, we have to address them very quickly. And so some of that money that we are having available is just going to go repay bills that are already passed due not to bank and save for, um, that would, would be a luxury. We don't have that luxury right now. We hope that through the improved collections that we have, which are about $5 million a month now, that that is going to really be our leverage into the future and helping to you know, strengthen and sustain our system. What is the timetable on on these layoffs, and will there be any more layoffs within the health division or even within the rest of the Muskogee Creek Nation? Um, within the rest of the Muskogee Nation, uh, there's nothing on the horizon there. Uh, within the health department, I believe what you're seeing at this point really is the tail end of the things that we will be doing. There may be a position or so in the future, but um, none is planned. So at this point, we're really concluding that part of the decision making and measures that we have to take so that the that we get a baseline for the healthcare system and build up from there. Talk about what led us like how did we get into these circumstances and why are we having to lay off people? I wish I could answer that question of all the circumstances. I don't know all the circumstances. When I walked in the door as the principal chief, um, I estimated we were about $28 million in the hole. As you can now find out, we're more than double that amount. And so there have been some surprises and not pleasant ones. My job and my responsibility, and I feel my responsibility of this to the citizens is to be open about it. Uh, we've been transparent in reporting on a quarterly basis to our citizens in the reports and making those choices that we must make so that the system remains strong and vibrant in the future. And that's been the um, utmost thing on our minds and the quality of care must be there for every citizen and, or any person 
who accesses our system. And I think we can, I can sit here and assure people that it will be. And today, we, Monday, we began, um, you know, the whole new approach at a baseline, and we work up from there. And I think that, uh, again, the patients will see that we have providers in place, providing the quality of care they expect, and we'll keep moving forward. One, one of the things um, we've previously covered at Muskogee Media is, is the audit and the deficit and things, things that have, have appeared. Is, is this a result of um, the 2015 audit that, that has kind of come in? And how do you get to, um, how, how did you see the deficit? What documentation led you to that? Well, the 2015 audit was, I, in my view, um, kind of the first marker that I saw because it indicated that we were in a deficit. I think at that time about 15 to 16 million dollars. Now that we have the 2016 audit in place and that amount nearly doubled, um, then that validates what we have uncovered through talking to people, analyzing the data that we had, looking at financial statements, income statements, and things of that matter. And we knew that we had opportunities, but we knew that we had to overcome this deficit and address that so that we could move forward because, you know, we have in the private sector people and businesses that depend upon us. And when we haven't paid them and we owe them now at this moment, we've got to make good on our debts. And unfortunately, you know, the sad part of the whole thing is, is measures we have to take to address them and move forward. One, one of the things that was uh, listed when um, Creek Nation went to the council to ask for a loan, you know, to fix the deficit was poor planning on part of the Department of Health and acquiring facilities. Would you say that, that those items led to this moment today? I would say that um, the items that were uh, brought to the attention of the National Council um, originated from the 2015 audit and also appeared in the 2016 audit. So any, any person can look at that and derive that themselves. It validated, like I said before, uh, some of the thinking that we had and um, served as a uh, kind of a roadmap for us to make the corrections that we needed to make. And so, um, again, the National Council had been very patient with us as we made sure we feel that we've got things right so that we could move forward and not be going back to them again. And um, you know, 2017 is the year that we have to make everything balance. Is, are the layoffs one of the recommendations? I know we've hired consultants for the Department of Health that are going to be with us to kind of uh, revamp the department. Is this part of the recommendations is that we lay off some individuals? Yeah. I'll refer back to um, the document that was um, generated back in February or March during that time period, some of the options that were available. The consultants have come in, um, the two consultants that we have, and looked through those options and advised us whether you know, those were options that would be in our best interest in the future or not. And so in that regard, they've done their job. They've looked at the data, they've spoken to accrediting and licensing uh, agencies on our behalf, uh, positioned us um, in a, a manner that we make the right decisions going forward, and we followed their advice. And um, we needed that because the Creek Nation healthcare system is a very complex system of multiple inpatient facilities licensed by the state of Oklahoma, um, in addition to um, federal Medicare licensure, and we serve Indian and non-Indian patients. And so it's not what you would see in some other tribes that don't merely see maybe even just their tribal members or Indian people. You know, we're very much a, a private business operation uh, that you would see in, in any other system, even like St. John's. We have, we're comparable to that size. So you have to apply the same principles. And um, that's... I think what may have been missing in the past, um, you know, as I came in as principal chief and we brought people on to address the issue, yes, we did look at the past, 
what we had to plan for the future. And that's where most of our energy is gone. When the, the George Nye Rehabilitation Center was acquired uh, by the nation, you know, that part of our agreement with the state was to keep that open as a service to, to people in the rural area around Oak Mulgee so that people didn't have to go to Oklahoma City or Tulsa for services. How, how is closing the inpatient facility um, at the rehabilitation center, how do you think that's going to affect the community? And is there any changes at the former Oak Mulgee Memorial Hospital that might affect the community as well? Well, let me talk about the George Nye Center first. I think by the time we obtained it, the trend of the usage by patients to other facilities in Tulsa and Oklahoma City had already started. And we've seen the decline in usage not be that steep because by the time we uh, took possession of the, the facility, I think they had hit a baseline. What we've seen is that baseline just stay straight with very few patients coming in. And so, I think the state recognized that as well. It's probably one of the issues they considered when they started talking to us. Um, and so we inherited that. It's a good facility. There's some good staff there. It has some good potential. We just now need to reorganize that in a way that we meet the outpatient needs of physical therapy. So again, as most of that is done during the daytime, is to bring that daytime business into our facilities. We have the only pool therapy center in this county and it's not being fully utilized. We, we can change that. And um, so recognizing those things is an important part of this overall change. And then what about the Oak Mulgee facility as well? The or Mulgee, the, the, the hospital? The Oak Mulgee hospital uh, now is going to play a key part of our future. Uh, I know personally, even as a candidate for principal chief, I was very skeptical about that. But the realignment allows us to fully utilize that facility. Uh, we have administrative staff there. Uh, as we've talked about the Ny George Nye Center, those inpatient requirements that uh, are low, but can still be met in the Okmulgee facility by the change in licensure, um, allows us to continue to serve our patients. Uh, we have seen an increase in the emergency room uh, activity there. And so, you know, we're going to proceed with working on uh, organizing that facility so that going forward, that is going to be a key piece of our healthcare system. Uh, it won't be cheap to go back in and um, rebuild that facility and remodel it, but we pretty much have to do that because overall, it will be a savings to the tribe in the long run. So, um, you know, I think that's where you get into some scenarios where it looks like we're at conflicts with each other because, you know, maybe changing the inpatient uh, licensure at George Nye, also changing Oak Mulgee, is to incorporate that and then laying off people and try, trying to invest in the infrastructure at the same time. They, they seem in conflict with each other, but they have to be done so that we can assure that as we move forward that the hospital here in Oak Mulgee is configured in a way to meet the needs of the people. There's going to be a good facility, a clean facility, and a strong facility as we go forward. We've got some great services there, uh, but some of that, that space needs to be remodeled. Why do you think this is the best plan for the nation to move forward um, by, by laying off individuals instead of maybe closing a facility or selling off a facility or, or another plan altogether? Well, the plan that we have in place is really built upon expansion. Um, we will have the Okima facility completed by the end of this calendar year. By next spring, we will be uh, move, we'll have fully moved in and occupied that facility and it will be operating. The Ufala Clinic is scheduled to uh, begin construction in November and will open about 18 months later and we will be fully utilized. We're now in 5,000 square feet at Ufala. We'll be in 170,000 square feet in Ufala. So the long range view of our healthcare system looks very promising. Um, yes, we've had to go back in and re-engineer both locations so that we make sure that we have value in those facilities and not extravagance. And so, you know, we have cut some costs there, but 
guaranteed that you know we're going to have very fine facilities for our people and so as we make these changes you know one is kind of dependent on another and so um, again we're at a point it's almost like a little pinch point here where everything kind of comes to this crossroads do we have to make decisions at this time go past that area get into the future and began our plans for expansion. Is there anything else that you think citizens need to know about what's going on today? Well, I want to make sure our citizens know that, you know, I'm totally responsible for this. That, you know, as a principal chief, I have to sign off on everything. And believe me, it wasn't done in haste. Uh, it was done with a lot of deliberation and a lot of input from a number of different people, a number of different sources. And so, you know, they may get upset with some of our staff, but, you know, it, I'd love to hear it if they have uh, any complaints about it, uh, any ideas, any input for the future, um, you know, please avail themselves to me because I would, I'd love to hear it. But I also want to guarantee to our people that, you know, we're striving for the best quality care they can get in our health care system. And the way that we're organizing will set us up so that we are a high quality organization providing great health care services to the people who use our system. We do need them to use our system. Our numbers need to go up. And we will work on the other aspects of it, like generating revenue, making sure that our Bill payment is current, making sure that we have the latest technology available, and those things are being worked on as we speak. That will set the platform for a successful healthcare system for the future. And there you have it, straight from Principal Chief James Floyd. Uh, his thoughts, his comments regarding the health system crisis that we have going on at Muskogee Creek Nation right now. Uh, it's important to remember uh, at Muskogee Creek Nation, whether we're in Muskogee Media or anywhere else, uh, our number one priority is the citizens. For us, it's to get them the right information they need in the proper fashion and, and, and as soon as they need it. So um, we're, we, what, everything we do is for the citizens. So citizens are hurting from this decision. Lots have been let go, have lost their jobs. We just want to uh, send out our thoughts and uh, the best of luck to those citizens uh, that they can continue on in their future endeavors. And this is just a minor setback and that our Department of Health and our nation as a whole uh, can come back from this as well. So uh, it's important to note that. Stay with us on MuskogeeMedia.com for any further developments. We uh, hope that you all have a great week. Follow our outlets for all the up to, late, uh, up to the latest news. We'll see you next time.